At first glance, a hot air balloon looks almost magical. A massive fabric envelope gently inflates. A flame roars beneath it, and suddenly this quiet basket begins to rise. No wings, no engines, no visible force pushing it upward. It feels like defying gravity. But behind that peaceful ascent is a surprisingly elegant mix of physics, history, and human curiosity that dates back centuries. So how does a hot air balloon actually rise into the sky? Let's find out right here on History of Simple Things. To understand how hot air balloons rise, we need to start with a simple idea. Air has weight. Even though we can't see it, air is made of tiny molecules constantly moving around us. When those molecules are packed closely together, the air becomes heavier. When they spread out, the air becomes lighter. Hot air balloons rise because they take advantage of this invisible difference. When air is heated, its molecules move faster and spread farther apart. This makes hot air less dense than the cooler air around it. Nature always tries to balance things out, so the heavier, cooler air pushes underneath the lighter, hot air. The result is lift. The balloon doesn't pull itself up. It's pushed upward by the surrounding atmosphere. This principle is known as buoyancy the same force that allows ships to float on water and helium balloons to rise in the sky. Inside a hot air balloon, this process begins with the burner. Modern burners use propane gas, which is ignited to produce a powerful flame. That flame heats the air inside the balloon's envelope, often raising its temperature to over 100 degrees Celsius. As the air inside becomes hotter and lighter than the air outside, the balloon begins to lift. The larger the volume of hot air inside the envelope, the greater the lifting force. But rising isn't just about heat, it's about balance. The balloon must produce enough lift to carry its envelope, basket, burner, fuel, passengers, and the air inside. If the air inside the balloon cools too much, it becomes denser and heavier, and the balloon descends. If it's heated more, the balloon climbs higher. Pilots don't steer hot air balloons in the traditional sense. They control altitude, not direction. This idea of lighter-than-air flight fascinated humans long before airplanes existed. The first successful hot air balloon flight took place in France in 1783, created by the Montgolfier brothers, Joseph Michel and Jacques Etienne. They noticed that hot air and smoke rising from fires could lift lightweight objects. Their earliest experiments involved paper and fabric balloons filled with smoke from burning straw and wool. After successfully testing a passenger-carrying balloon with a sheep, a duck, and a rooster, who all survived, the Montgolfier brothers proved flight was possible, soon sending humans aloft decades before powered aircraft existed. Over time, risky open fires were replaced by propane burners and heat-resistant modern materials, making hot air ballooning far safer and more reliable. The envelope itself is carefully engineered. It isn't just a big bag of air, it's shaped to maximize lift while remaining stable. Panels are sewn together to distribute stress evenly, and vents at the top allow pilots to release hot air when they want to descend. A parachute valve, controlled by a rope, opens briefly to let hot air escape, reducing lift in a controlled way. One of the most interesting facts about hot air balloons is how slowly they move vertically. Most rise only a few hundred feet per minute, creating a peaceful, floating experience. Yet their ascent is governed by strict physics, with lift depending on temperature, balloon volume, and atmospheric pressure. 
which is why flights perform best in cooler, stable air early in the morning or near sunset, while midday heat can make them less predictable. Weather plays a crucial role in ballooning. While wind doesn't lift the balloon, it determines its horizontal path, so pilots navigate by rising or descending into different wind currents. And once the air inside is hot enough, the balloon can float efficiently for long periods with only occasional bursts of flame, making flights both adventurous and environmentally gentle. There's also a psychological element to hot air balloon flight. Unlike airplanes, which isolate passengers from the outside world, balloons are open. You feel the wind, hear the burner, smell the air, and see the landscape without barriers. This sensory connection reinforces the illusion that you're not moving at all, that the earth itself is sliding beneath you. Hot air balloons have served many purposes beyond recreation. In the 18th and 19th centuries, they were used for scientific observation, weather studies, and military reconnaissance. During the American Civil War, balloons were deployed to observe enemy troop movements from above. Scientists used them to measure atmospheric pressure, temperature, and altitude long before satellites existed. Even today, weather balloons, filled with helium rather than hot air, use the same principles of buoyancy to gather data high in the atmosphere, helping scientists understand climate, storms, and Earth's structure, while hot air balloons endure as a reminder that flight doesn't need engines or noise, just warm air, patience, and a respect for how nature works. So when a hot air balloon rises, it isn't fighting gravity but working with it, becoming lighter than the surrounding air and letting the atmosphere do the lifting, which is why watching a balloon ascend never gets old. It's physics made visible, history floating upward, and a reminder that the most powerful forces are often unseen. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.